Hey everyone, it's been my first time in UConn, so absolutely lovely campus. It's really an honor to be here with all of you. So I'm Jonathan, I'm one of the co-founders of Raincoat. And the reality is that it's no secret that the world is changing, um, especially with everything that you see in the news from wildfires to hurricanes, to floods, to droughts, you kind of name it. And for us, it's really clear that better financial safety nets have to be built than what currently is there. Our mission is to leverage the power of science, data, and engineering to be able to provide financial protection to everyone on the planet. And when I say financial protection, a lot of you are probably thinking about insurance. And you're probably thinking about it not from necessarily the most positive light. It almost sometimes seems like everyone has some sort of a insurance horror story that they share. But imagine if that wasn't the case. Imagine if we lived in a world where after an experience, you got a text message saying, hey, I know that this happened. This is what I think you need. Here's money, no strings attached, no questions asked, and everything just worked kind of like magic. Kind of sounds like sci-fi, but the reality is that we're already doing this for tens of thousands of people all across the world right now. And our focus is to create fully automated climate insurance solutions and the infrastructure that powers them. We work with governments, nonprofits, insurance companies, and banks to be able to develop these products and then embed it in those channels and then support them so that they're a success. We started out in Puerto Rico just three years ago and since then we've expanded worldwide. And going back to Puerto Rico, um, what really got this whole thing started and how an engineer gets into insurance was really summer of 2017. I moved to Puerto Rico to take care of my mother who was very delicate at the time. Uh, a couple weeks later, I didn't expect it, but Hurricane Maria hit the island. And my biggest concern was really just if my mom was going to be okay or not. Unfortunately, she lived pretty deep in the island, so it took me three days to get to her. And while she was okay, her house wasn't. The ramp that she would rely on had been completely blown away, and there were all these issues that had to be fixed. So I very naively asked her if she had insurance. She said she did, and she gave me the insurance policy. It was the first time that I had ever seen an insurance policy. It was a 40-page monster. I didn't really understand much of what was written there, but I did kind of understand how to start the claims process, so that's what I did. But this is where we kind of have to adjust the timeline, because from the moment that I filed that claim to the moment that the adjuster came by, basically a year went by. And by the time the adjuster was there and they took the pictures and took the notes, I felt, okay, this is good, it's gonna get resolved. We ended up waiting six more months after that, and our claim was denied. So we wait 18 months uh, to get a big uh, claim denied, and as you can imagine, this wasn't a positive experience for me. And the unfortunate reality was that this was actually not particularly uncommon. It didn't matter if we were looking at wildfires in California, typhoons in Japan, or flooding in Germany, you would actually see these stories repeat themselves over and over again. So the question was, why wasn't the industry building better products? What was actually missing? Well, the unfortunate truth is that building better products is actually really, really hard. For the first part, um, developing a fully automated insurance policy is actually really complicated. And how do you measure an event and detect its intensity is a big scientific hurdle. The second issue is that there's a lot of data available, but integrating all of that data into a usable product and model is actually really complicated, requires a lot of infrastructure. And then finally, automating all the aspects of an insurance policy given legacy systems requires a lot of software and a lot of integrations. But these are all software issues, and that's basically what we do. We develop highly scalable and embedded climate insurance products. They're fully white labeled and built in collaboration with channels. And then we provide the infrastructure for that to be a success. And in that sense, it's a very modular platform that allows us to work with a large diversity of different types of channels. For example, those channels usually fall into one of two big categories. They're either channels that are looking to expand revenue stream by offering new products. This is commonly what you find with an insurance company. But we also work with the other side of that equation which are entities that are looking to provide protection, not necessary to sell, but to be able to actually offer it. So a couple examples of work that we've done. In Mexico, they don't really have the equivalent of FEMA, but the government really wanted to protect 200,000 small-scale farmers. And this was a case where there was a lot of complexity in developing a product that could work at that scale. And with a large consortium of really great companies, we were able to build a solution that now protects those farmers whenever there's a big catastrophic event in their region. In Colombia, the Banco Agrario of Colombia is the largest agricultural bank in the region. They issue billions of dollars of loans, and now farmers can get those loans protected when they go take them out. So now when there's a big drought, that insurance policy covers the loan, and the farmer doesn't have to pay it back, and it's a win-win for all the parties. And to kind of show you the full wide range, 
in my native Puerto Rico, Hyundai is one of the largest uh, brands on the island. And instead of offering a rebate, they started to offer hurricane coverage to the sales of the cars. It's been a really successful program because if you live in Puerto Rico, you're thinking about hurricanes all the time. And it really resonates with consumers. And none of this would have been possible without an incredibly talented and technical team that includes both all of the data and science sides, but also really longstanding insurance expertise. And we're also backed by some really great investors in the space that, that understand it well. And fundamentally, we think that the automated transformation of insurance is inevitable, but that transformation takes a lot of software and a lot of development, and we see ourselves as one of the partners in helping that transition happen. Thank you.